Okay, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Chantal. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. As you know, I moved to Bali a few months ago now. And since I moved here, people have asked me loads of questions about why I moved, what it's like, what do they need to do to be able to move themselves. So I thought I'd just come on and answer five common questions that I get about the whole experience. If you haven't done already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press that notification bell for new video releases. All right, so one of the most common questions that people ask is about visas. In Bali and Indonesia generally, you have to have a visa to be able to stay here. And the most common visa that people come in on is an entry on arrival. And that gives you 30 days, you can extend that. But that's generally just for people who are traveling or want an extended vacation. So the next most common visa, if you wanted to stay for an extended period, is the B211, and that allows you 60 days. So the B211 is for 60 days, but you can extend that twice. So in total, it gives you six months, but even after that, you can extend it again. Some people go offshore for a day, take a, a flight to Singapore or something, um, but there are also options to extend that onshore as well. The other option is to get a key test, which is a residency visa. And there are different options for that. I am no visa expert. I can only really tell you, tell you about my experience. So I have a business here in Bali, an interior design business, and that allows me to have a two-year visa. So two years and then the option to extend it after that. And the costs for that are around, I'm gonna say $1,400 for the key test and there are additional costs with setting up a company as well. What I would say is to talk to someone about recommendations for a visa agent. There's loads out there, but you really wanna work with somebody who's had experience, who can provide you with a recommendation. So if you know anybody that's been here, I'd say get a recommendation of them and just make sure you're in the right hand. So another thing that people ask is about the weather. Bali is tropical all year round, beautiful weather, but there are two distinct seasons, rainy season and dry season. So in the rainy season, that is from November to March. But with things the way they are, they're kind of changing a little bit, but generally that's rainy season. And what you will find is that when it rains, it rains. It's heavy, but it's kind of like for set periods of time, it's generally not all day. But it's still beautiful, it's still hot, it's still humid, um, and it's still beautiful to be here. But, you know, sometimes it can put a bit of a damper on activities, so think about that. The dry season which we're approaching now is April to October and during this time humidity is really high, you know, you still get the occasional drizzle but it's kind of more predictable weather. The thing is, is that even in the rainy season places are equipped for it so, you know, the outdoor restaurants, they'll have cover-ups, There'll be, you know, raincoats available for if you're on the bike. It's not kind of one of those places where it rains and everything stops. So I definitely wouldn't let that put me off if you're thinking about coming in rainy season. It's actually a beautiful time where, you know, the land is being nourished and it's just beautiful to see that. But it, it depends on what your preference is. Getting around. So... <laughs> Bali is definitely not a place for pedestrians, I would say. Um, majority of people use mopeds, bikes, whatever you want to call them to get around. I would say that mopeds are what maybe 80% of the, the vehicles here. Cars are definitely a minority. And I only started riding a moped last year even though i've been coming for years because it is a little bit intimidating there are so many bikes on the road and people drive really fast accidents do happen but there's very little accidents that happen here compared to the amount of people that are here and the amount of bikes people ride fast but they're also very um respectful and there's no 
there's not much kind of, you know, arrogance and road rage and things like that on the road. People are just busily getting on with their things. So once you get on a bike and you really get the confidence, it's okay, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of traffic out there, but, um, you know, it's not like some places where it's just stressful and everyone's heated, it's kind of chilled. Um, so obviously you can hire a car or when you're here, so you can hire a driver or you can hire a car yourself. But I would say my experience of being in a car, yeah, you do have that level of comfort, especially on really hot days or rainy days, but it's much slower to get around because on a bike, you're just whizzing through traffic. Um, and on the, in the car, obviously it's a lot more, you know, you don't have the flexibility to do that. So traffic being how it is in Bali, in a car, it is a lot slower. There isn't really a public transportation system, not that I'm aware of anyway. So yeah, I think there are in some areas, but generally, no. Cost of living. Cost of living is one of those things that everyone wants to know about in Bali. And I would definitely say someone who's lived in Australia for the past 10 years and England prior to that, the cost of living is good. It isn't as cheap as people think it is. Um, over the years, and especially since the pandemic, the cost of accommodation, for example, has really, really rocketed. And, and that was something that came as a surprise to me coming back last year. But still, in terms of your lifestyle and other costs, you know, eating out, social activities, things like that, um, the cost of living is really good. I feel like here, the cost of living is low, but I do spend a lot of money because things are cheaper, so I do more of them. For example, um, self-care, I love my massages and nails and facials and things that would have just been, you know, a rare treat back in Australia is something that I do on a weekly basis here. So keep that in mind as well. I also find that somebody who is into interior designs and I've been renovating my villa, the cost of furniture, and home decor is so good here and the quality of it is amazing too. Um, just things that would cost, you know, so much that you can only kind of dream of. Custom made furniture, for example, it's so readily, readily available um, in Bali, so I really love that. What made me move to Bali? Um, another frequent question. I love it here. I feel like there's somewhere for everybody and this is definitely my place, it's just somewhere where I feel happy, I feel nourished, I love the people, I love the land, I love the landscape, um, I love the temperature, I love the food, I love the rice fields, just seeing them just kind of makes my heart warm and I love the home decor. So someone who is, you know, really into interior design, this is the mecca for that, like it's next level beautiful and it's everywhere, whether it's a bar you go into, a cafe, restaurant, what have you, the creativity is just amazing. Um, so yeah, coming here for so many, so many times over the past few years, I just definitely felt like this was it. I came, I spent a couple of months here and made the decision. The advice that I would give would be to come and test it out. I mean, some people are just happy to just say, Tin, on the map, that's where I want to go and good for you. But if you're not sure, test it out. I've been coming to Bali for um, the past eight years and I've been here so many times and I really had to think about, is it somewhere that I just love to come on vacation or could I really see myself living here? Because there are so many things that are different. It's beautiful, but some of the things are harder and a bit more of a struggle. So I would say come, test it out, give yourself at least a month, two months if you can and just integrate yourself, stay away from the touristy areas, just try and get into the local areas and, and, and live as if you would be living here as much as possible and see if it's for you. All right, so I hope you find that useful. If you have any other questions about the whole experience of moving to Bali, you wanna know anything in particular, shoot me a question in the comments and I'll come back with another video in the future. But in the meantime, I hope that's been useful. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon. Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel. <laughs> What's this noise? I can't some visa expert. <laughs> what do I do?
together in the right hands. What the hell? Is it a bat? <laughs> Why is it attacking me? Yeah, but oh, you, you expect me to just be still while this thing is driving near my eyes? Huh? Oh, look at this now. 